Hey, this is Kyle, and today we're going to be going over some tips and tricks that I've found uh, to be useful on my 2021 Graham 1500 Laramie 4x4 with the Hemi E-Torque motor. So I've had this uh, for about a month, and my first tip to you, highly recommend getting it ceramic coated or ceramic coating it yourself. So that just... Uh, helps your paint uh, protect it from the sun as well as make it uh, a lot easier to clean when it does uh, rain or you get it dirty when you're uh, driving. So as you can see, it makes the rain run on the paint. So this is the only spot of dirt after uh, three rainstorms that you can see. And it makes the whole truck just so much easier uh, to keep clean because you can just spray water on it and wipe it off. You don't have to use soap and it just makes the whole truck a lot nicer because you don't have to worry about uh, going out and cleaning that after every rainstorm because again it is so easy to keep it clean. Now I did ceramic coat uh, the entire truck including all of the plastics, the wheels, the running boards, the mirrors, and the entire length of the vehicle on the side. And the tailgate. So, everything uh, stays nice. This is, again, after three rainstorms, I haven't wiped the truck, I haven't done anything to it, and it just keeps the dust uh, from sticking to the paint. And, again, just keeps everything uh, that much nicer. So, definitely uh, get your vehicle ceramic coated. Alright, so we're going to go to tip number two, and that has to do with the doors. So as you can see, the easy entry doors, you keep the key fob in your pocket, you just walk up, and you can open them uh, with the fob as long as it's with you. And... If you're walking away from the truck, there is a setting that you can have it automatically locked after some time it detects you walk away, or you can just lock by pressing the button on the front uh, door handles. Something that I wish uh, the Ram had was the keyless go in the rear handles. So you can see I'm putting my hand in the handle and nothing's happening. Um, I can't open the truck. I have to actually go up to the front doors for it to open. Some other vehicles these days uh, have the auto open doors on all the doors, but on the Ram, it is only the front. So just tip to remember um, that the front doors are the only ones that actually uh, you can open them from and lock them from. And a third tip that I have for you is to uh, use the easy entry seat. So as you can see, that is not uh, engaged at this moment. It is in the front seating position uh, that is most comfortable for me. But, as you can see, there is not that much room in between um, the steering wheel and the seat because it is in my preferred seating position for when I'm driving. So that does make it a little bit uh, more difficult to get in if you are trying to uh, preserve the seat without uh, sliding across the bolster of the seat. So, utilize the easy entry seat, which I can, will be showing you how to do on that screen on the inside. Alright, moving on to number three. And that is to utilize your storage. So we'll go ahead and we'll walk around to the other side of the truck, where I can show this best. And you can see, I have my settings so that when I open the uh, driver's door, it unlocks all of them. You can have it just open the driver's door uh, with that keyless go as well. And again, I will be showing those settings that are in the screen. But moving on to number three, and that is to utilize your storage. So underneath these seats here in the back, you have uh, the storage that is underneath the seats. This holds your... Uh, grocery bags up and you can keep things in here 
You can even fold this down, lift this piece up. and fold that up to give you more space back here. You also have space in these door pockets. You have space in the door, multiple areas. And then underneath your covers, if you have them, you have uh, the coolers. And I just have my Husky tire inflator located in mine so that it's with me all the time just in case i have to go help somebody inflate the tire it's with me so uh you do have those coolers that you can utilize for uh obviously beverages or you can utilize them for anything else and there is ample storage ample room in this vehicle so if you want to keep a little battery jump box keep it underneath the seat keep it with you you have plenty of room if you want to keep a trailer hitch or uh, toe straps again you can fold that open and just throw it underneath the seat the next tip is to enhance passenger comfort we're going to go ahead and get inside the vehicle so they have a grab handle right here that they can utilize they get themselves in the vehicle and uh, like a normal truck the seating position is uh, pretty direct so actually these do recline so knees their butt in the front of the seat there is a lever so utilize that lever pull it up and you can pull the seat forward and now they have a much more comfortable seating position and just like that you can pull the lever up and push the seat back all right so, so to go over a few of the other features i am going to start the truck so to do that, uh, press your foot on the brake and push the button and the truck will start right up. So as you can see, I do have my phone um, connected to CarPlay and this is wired CarPlay. If you have uh, the Uconnect 4 screen or if you have the diagonal 12 inch screen that does have wireless CarPlay as well as Android Auto. Uh, this is just uh, wired CarPlay so that it does have all the functions that you would expect. So you can utilize anything that you would need. And it does have your music and any feature that you're used to with obviously Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. This does also have the built-in navigation if you don't want to connect your phone to it. It does have that built-in navigation. Now I'm going to go to the settings on this display and I'm going to go through a few of the settings um, that I prefer. So first I'm going to go to the mirrors and wipers and there is an option to tilt the side mirrors when you put it in reverse if you're um, trying to back into a parking spot, it helps you see uh, the spot a lot easier because you are able to see those uh, lines. However, I've discovered that the backup camera is good enough and I do not need those uh, mirrors folding down and then folding back up when I get into my spot. I also have the rain sensing auto wipers set on so that um, it, very, it changes the speed well, uh, as it gets heavier, it automatically changes that speed. And then obviously turn the headlights on um, when the wipers are engaged. Another thing that I have set on is underneath the brake setting, and that is for the automatic parking brake. So you can see in my display, I have uh, brake on, which means that the parking brake automatically turned on when I put the car in park. So if I go ahead and shift into reverse, I can't actually go anywhere. I find that useful when I'm parking on um, a hill. It keeps you in the spot versus when you actually put a car in park, uh, an automatic vehicle in park, it does that roll for 
like a third of an inch, it brings you forward again. I just leave that out of park brake on so that it holds you in that spot when you put yourself into park. We'll go to the light settings and headlight off, delay, headlight and illumination on approach. So headlight off, delay, I've that set to zero seconds so when I turn the truck off the uh, headlights are automatically off so I don't drain my battery at all. And then I also have the auto dim high beams on so that if it senses a car, it turns um, the high beams off and puts them back to uh, the regular headlights. I do have daytime running lights on and then I have flashlights with lock on so that I know um, that the truck was locked. So as we go to the doors and lock section, auto door lock, as I stated, if you walk away uh, from the vehicle with the key in your pocket and you forget to lock it, it'll automatically do that. Same thing with auto unlock on exit. If you open this door handle and the car is in park, it'll automatically unlock the doors. So you can see flashlight uh, with lock and then sound horn with lock. I have it for first press to um, sound the horn when I'm locking the vehicle just so I know that it's been locked. I also have the lights flash uh, when you press that lock button. So the first press of key fob unlocks uh, all doors instead of just the driver's door, which is convenient for me if I'm uh, bringing groceries or have another person with me. Again, um, that's just my preference as to unlock all the doors versus just the driver's door. So passive entry is the um, doors with the keyless go. So you put your hand behind it and it automatically opens. So if we go to the seats and comfort setting, you can see the easy exit seat which I mentioned, if you uh, go ahead and turn the car off, it'll bring the seat back for an easier position for you to grab this handle and get out of the truck um, because it brings you further away from this steering wheel. And it does the same thing uh, when you are opening the door. Uh, the seat is pulled back so that it's easier for you to get into the truck. And then when you press um, the run button, it brings the seat forward to your programmed setting that's in the door. So underneath the phone is just uh, phone pop-ups in cluster, do not disturb mode if you have that set on your phone. Paired phone and audio devices, that's where you'd go to pair another phone. If you have uh, multiple phones, you can set priority level as to which one um, will work if they're both in the car with you. And then Projection Manager is uh, managing CarPlay and Android Auto on the screen. And again, which one will have that priority. And then underneath Sirius XM Setup, it shows you uh, Tune Start. So it brings you to the screen so that you can select what channel you want to uh, when you start the truck. Start this system up if you are utilizing that Sirius XM. So under display, I just have it set to auto so that the screen is on um, whenever. I can just turn it off by pressing that screen off button. And I have the beep off because I just felt that was obnoxious when I'm clicking through things to be hearing a noise. Uh, control screen timeout just means that if you are on uh, one of the climate controls or something, after 30 seconds or so, it brings you back to uh, whatever media you were, what, if you were in the navigation, it brings you um, back to that. The fuel display uh, in cluster shows you uh, on this display over here, as well as the navigation turn by turn. So instead of it just being here, it displays in uh, your cluster in front of the driver. And then the, uh, the weather alerts, if you are driving and utilizing the built-in uh, navigation, it'll tell you whether along your route, and it'll say, hey, there's a upcoming thunderstorm. Just wanted to let you know, um, just so that you know that there is a possibility of a thunderstorm on your route. Units, if you want to use uh, US or metric, that does change it for uh, the screen. For all your temperature gauges, uh, it changes it to kilometers per hour, as well as uh, MPG. So, you can see it changes the temperature that I have 
everything set to. And over here it changes everything to Celsius as well as my range is now kilometers. And my average uh, MPG did change as well. Um, it's now liters per kilometer. But we'll go ahead and just change that back. The odometer also changed. Underneath voice, uh, the voice response length you can set to brief or detailed. Um, I found detailed to be too long and you can't interrupt it while it's speaking, so I set it to brief just so that it's done uh, when I am telling it a command. And then show command list uh, pops up on the screen when you do uh, utilize this voice button, but I set it to never. Just again, more personal preference. Clock. I put set to 12 hours and set by GPS. We'll be going over some tips over here with this display as well. So this is where you see the active or fixed backup uh, camera guidelines. So you can, when you're in reverse, you can have it set to active so that they move when you turn your steering wheel. Or you can have it set to fixed so that it stays when you turn your steering wheel. I like active, uh, just my personal preference. And then for safety in uh, driving assistance, it has forward, forward collision warning that is one of the packages that this truck has. So I have it on warning and active braking, and I have it at a medium distance, just for its sensitivity. Uh, the volume for the park sense, so if I'm uh, parking in a parking spot, it lets you know and it says there's an object close to the front of the vehicle. I have it set to low and uh, low in the back as well when you're backing up. I just didn't want it to be uh, too loud and obnoxious when I am parking in a parking spot. So braking assist, um, if it detects you're too close to an object, it'll brake for you. And then uh, blind spot alert, lights and chime, if you uh, do have a car next to you and you don't notice, it'll illuminate a little light. And then if you do turn your turn signal on, it'll uh, make a noise at you. So I have that set to light and chime. And then trailer length for blind spot alert. If you have a trailer plugged in, it'll automatically recognize the uh, length of that uh, trailer. And if you are turning your turn signal on, it'll say, hey, there's a vehicle within uh, 15 feet of you and just know that you have a trailer behind you so it'll automatically calculate for that trailer as well there's hill start assist as well as tire fill assist in the safety settings as well so let's go ahead and look at some of the settings in the gauge cluster so a few tips and tricks for you for the uh, cluster if you go ahead and press the down arrow until you are at the settings screen, which will be number nine, it'll be screen setup. Then you press the middle button on the left side of that steering wheel, you press OK, and you can pretty much customize any um, of these quadrants. So that would be upper left, upper right, center, right side, lower right, this will be odometer, this will be bottom left, and this will be left side. And then center will be this center display. So you can customize the odometer if you want it to just be uh, miles, or if you want a point of a mile, you can have that. If you uh, want to display current gear, you can turn that on or off. So if you want to change the setting, you just click into it with OK, select the setting, and then click OK, and it saves. So you can see in this right side, I have it set to uh, range, which I find to be the most useful. Some options that you have um, for those sides, or for actually all of these, is uh, range to empty, average economy, oil temperature, trans temperature, coolant temperature, oil life. Uh, the menu settings, or nothing, I find it most useful to have the range on the right side. 
and let's just go, uh, let's look at one of these corners. So lower right, you can have it to be trans temp, battery voltage, oil temp, and you can see it is changing in that bottom right corner. So you can see oil pressure, trip distance, current economy, average economy, and that is trip A, uh, the range to empty, time, the outside temperature, a compass, um, but I like it to be the trans temp. And as you can see, um, I do have a clock at that uh, top, so that is center, and I have that set to time. So just know that this is a very customizable screen. It's a very high quality, very easy to see, very easy to read um, screen. So I usually just have all of those settings set. There's off-road display here, but I usually just have gauge summary set with my compass, my time, the temperature, uh, my range, my trans temp, and my MPG. And then if I want to customize any of those menu settings, uh, that is on this left side. I just utilize the buttons on this left side of the steering wheel, which are super easy to operate, and it changes right there on that display. So those are just a few tips that I have um, discovered over the use of this truck. Please go ahead and comment if you want to see any additional uh, tips and tricks. Or if you have any questions on this truck, have a great day. Thank you for watching.